Hey, this is Pastor Lafayette. Thank you for joining me today. We're in Psalm chapter 78. <coughs> Psalm 78, and uh, we're in verse 34. When he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and sought earnestly for God. That is actually a sad statement. What does it take for us to respond to God? Is he going to have to punish us? Will he have to reprimand us? Will he have to slay us, so to speak? What will he have to take away before we will return and earnestly seek him? That's a, that's a sad statement. Verse 35, Then they remembered that God was their rock and the Most High God their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouth and they lied to him with their tongue. Do we really think that God doesn't know these things? Do we really think that God doesn't understand? He knows when we're being honest and when we're not being honest. He knows when uh, we're, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a trick. He doesn't, can't be deceived. If we were standing worshiping God one day and the very next day we're doing things that don't even look like worship, he's not tricked. He knows that he's just being flattered. And we're lying to him. And we actually must, we have to be idiots to think that he doesn't know. Verse 37, for their heart was not steadfast with him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. That's a powerful statement. These are very powerful statements. <clears throat> but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that passes away and does not come again. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. This is a really crucial verse for us. Many times we don't understand just how powerful this verse is. I don't think we really get it that God is waiting to move on our behalf. We sometimes have the impression that we are puppets and he basically is a puppeteer. He makes us move. But the fact is he is waiting. And it says in verse 41 that they tempted him and limited the Holy One. In other words, they kept him back. I almost get a picture of him being handcuffed or chained in heaven, saying, if you would just allow me, if you would just invite me, if you would just involve me, I would be able to move and turn your life around. Why aren't you letting me? I'm limited up here. I'm limited in your life. Release me. wonder if that's like us. They did not remember his power. Think about that. They did not remember, verse 42, they did not remember his power. They limited God because they didn't remember that he's all-powerful, that he can do anything. Yeah, but this is an impossible situation. Perfect. It's the perfect situation for God to move in. Verse 42, they did not remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy. When he worked his signs in Egypt and wonders in the field of Zoan, he turned the rivers to blood, their streams that they could not drink. He sent swarms of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. He gave their crops to the caterpillar, labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He also gave up their cattle to the hail and their flocks to fiery lightning. <clears throat> he cast on them the fierceness of his anger with wrath, indignation, and trouble. By sending angels of destruction among them, he made a path for his anger. He did not spare their soul from death, but gave their life over to the plague and destroyed all the firstborn in Egypt, the first of their strength in the tents of Ham. But he made his own people to go forth like sheep, and he guided them in the wilderness like a flock. Here the writer is rehearsing all the great and mighty things God had done. Again, he's going all the way back to Egypt. He's going all the way back to Egypt to rehearse what God has done. My friend, I do not want to take us all the way back to Egypt. I don't always want to be people who always have to, hey, I remember when I first got saved. How about remembering yesterday? 
How about remembering recently what God has done for you? But he takes them all the way back to Egypt, <clears throat> maybe because they don't have any recent events that they can even think of. I don't know. But they forgot that God is all-powerful. He can help them. Don't forget today. I encourage you, take some time. Spend some time with the Lord. Know that He is able, well able, to meet you and to do amazing works in your life. He's worthy of praise and glory and honor. Give Him that today. God bless you. Take care, and we will uh, probably finish this tomorrow. Bye-bye.